hey, hey, guys, how's it going? I hope all of you are doing great today! Check it out, guys, today we are turning a glass box hanging from a mountain into a cool starter base. Fully equipped with a bed, an enchanting table, some wheat fields, and much more, guys. So, I hope you're excited for this one, and I hope you're ready. And if you're not, you know what to do. Grab your popcorn and grab your favorite designated beverage. And I guess let's get this time lapse started. All right, guys, back at it again with another starter base. So I was watching a bit of YouTube and came across a video by SheepGG, which is totally blowing up right now, guys. Uh, it's a video with the title of how to build a hanging house with everything you need in survival. And I thought this was such a well-made video. The build was not over the top. You could definitely build it in your first few nights in Minecraft. And it just looked so perfect, guys, hanging off the cliff that they built it. It looked really nice. I liked it a lot. So for those who haven't seen the video yet, I'll leave a link to the video in the video description. So definitely go check that out. It's really cool and a lot of fun to watch. So yeah, that's, that's what I want to say is that's where I got my inspiration from. So the main idea I had was to build a base in a glass box. I think this gives your starter base a pretty cool feel because you have a great view from the outside, which I guess of course is desirable guys when building a house from the side of a cliff, you just want to have a really great view. I wanted to enclose the glass with wood a bit in order to give it some support and originally I decided to go with spruce wood here. However, I quickly changed my mind and wanted to go with something more old school. And I chose a very old school color palette here, guys. That was oak wood with normal transparent glass. None of those stained variants that you have right now. And finally, some smooth stone slabs, which is pretty old school, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what really got into me when choosing the palette here, but I think it just fits the theme so well for a starter house here. Everyone always builds their first houses out of oak wood and doesn't really bother with staining their glass. So I thought this was a great pick for this base. Another great thing about the unstained glass is that you have a great view through it because it's basically transparent. There's no color really obstructing a view. So yeah, it's, it's really great guys. Of course, if you decide to build this starter house, you can always change the color palette. You're not really forced to use this one color palette or block palette, you can choose whatever you want. Perhaps, you know, a dark oak and some white stained glass for a snowy biome. Or, you know, dare I say some birch wood and black glass for a desert. There are just a bunch of possibilities. So yeah, get creative and have some fun. That's, that's the point of Minecraft. <laughs> In order to suspend the house off of the cliff, I built a wooden beam to support the glass box. I'll be honest guys, I was struggling a bit with this design, so I jumped back and forth between whether or not to have some additional ropes holding up the house, but in the end I decided that less is more here and with, went with a more simple design. I wanted the focus to be on the actual base, you know, the actual box, rather than the landscape or the structures around it. And I think that a simpler beam really helps with this. One thing which I think looks really cool here is using the grindstones as a chain to hold up the box. I got this idea from the original video, but I think that it just works so perfectly here, guys. The wooden legs of the grindstone just form a perfect chain, and I think this is a great build hack, which I'll definitely rem remember and also use in future videos, because I really like this. I really like how the, the beam looks currently. Now, I'll get back to the outside at the end of the video and detail it a little more, but once the general shape was done, it was time to move on to the inside of the starter house. And I'll be honest guys, it was a really fun challenge trying to squeeze in a base into a box this size. The inside is a 9x9x9 block cube, so immediately I thought that I wanted multiple floors to use this space more efficiently, but at the same time I also did not want to add too much wood inside here so that it blocks the view from the outside. What I decided to do 
in the end was to have all of the living area. So, you know, the bed, the crafting table, storage area, furnaces, and, and so on, all of that stuff. I wanted to have that all on the bottom of the cube. This meant you have everything you need for crafting close by, you don't really have to go on all of the other floors. And it also freed up the upper area for me to build a small wheat field for food, you know, for bread or for carrots or potatoes, as well as a nether wart farm to brew some potions. In the end, I also had to get a little creative with the layout since there wasn't too much space left. So I put some barrels under the wheat fields and some furnaces under the soul sand where the nether warts are growing. I think this turned out really cool because the furnaces and the storage are out of the way and it just opens up a great view to the outside. Right at the end I also added a few chests towards the back of the box for some bulk storage. So this place has a lot of storage if you uh, combine the barrels and the double chests in the entire box. So that's really cool. Once the interior was complete, all that was left to do was to build another portal and to add some detail to the outside of the box. I think the nether portal is a great way to get in and out of the base. All you have to do is, you know, just get into the nether and then come out and then you're actually in your box. But you can always just connect a tunnel or even a water elevator to the inside of the mountain to bring you up from the ground up to the box. You know, if you guys want a more traditional way to get to your starter house. Another cool thing which you guys could do was also to build an elytra landing pad, which I think would be really great if you do have an elytra when you're building this thing. There are just so many possibilities that you can do, guys. So yeah, like I said, get creative. I think that's the best thing about this game. It's just to find awesome ideas that you can do and just build them in the game. And that is pretty much it, guys. We decorated the outside and I'm really happy with the end result. I really like how this thing looks. One thing which I really like is that the base is really modular. You can build it with multiple boxes if you want a larger base, or you can even build a larger box. You can make it a different shape, for example, a rectangle or, you know, a sphere. That would be really cool. Or you can build it somewhere else. You know, this thing doesn't have to be hanging off a cliff. You can also build it off pillars, you know, a few blocks above ground or even underwater, guys. That would be a really cool place to build this thing. The possibilities are really endless here, so of course guys, get creative. <laughs> Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the starter house design. I really had a lot of fun building this and I hope you did too. I really like how this thing turned out. So if you did, make sure to smash that like button and if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe for more awesome content like this. However guys, that's gonna be it for me. I'll leave some cinematic shots at the end, but I'll let you guys sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the video.